Hi, I'm Catherine. Today I'm making naan bread. This recipe comes to us from Anvita from the blog, The Belly Rules the Mind. She uses simple ingredients to make delicious, healthy food for her family. I think you're gonna like what we're making today. Today I'm using maida flour. Maida flour is popular in the Indian culture. It's more finely milled, has the consistency of cake flour, but it also has a higher protein content. And that means that when we are kneading and rolling, we'll have a smooth elastic dough that's really easy to work with. I fitted my mixer with a dough hook, and today I'm gonna let the mixer do the work. My dough is ready. And I can tell because it has all gathered on the dough hook into a smooth, stretchy dough, and it's been kneading for about five minutes. If I pull up on just a little portion of the dough, I can see that it's nice and stretchy without breaking, and that's an indicator that my dough is nice and strong and ready to rise. Now, if you don't have a stand mixer, or if you just want to knead dough the old-fashioned way, that's the way I like to do it, this is what we're going to do. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of that maida flour right onto my surface, and then I'm going to knead the dough. I fold the bottom quarter of the dough up and then push away with the heel of my hands. And I'm gonna do that for about five to seven minutes until the dough is nice and stretchy. This dough is ready to rise now. I'm just going to shape it into a ball, and then I'm gonna try a new method. I'm gonna let this rise in an instant pot. I have sprayed the inside liner of my Instant Pot with a little bit of cooking spray. Now the dough goes in top side down, flip it over once so that both sides are greased. The lid goes back on, but I'm not going to seal it. I'm gonna let this rise on the yogurt setting, which will provide a nice warm environment, but I want a little bit of air circulating so it doesn't get too warm. This is a great way to let your dough proof. Of course, the traditional way to let your dough rise is to cover it with a towel and set it in an area of your kitchen that's free from drafts. Another method is to put it in the oven on the bread proofing setting. If your oven doesn't have that, no worries. Just turn on the oven light and close the door. That'll provide the perfect environment for your dough to rise. Now I'm going to punch down our risen dough just to deflate it a little bit. I'm just going to lightly flour the surface. And then it's time to portion the dough. You can use a bench scraper or a knife, or you can use your kitchen scale and weigh out the portions of the dough. So I'm just going to divide it in half, divide each of those halves in half, and then do that one more time until I get eight portions. I find the dough easiest to roll out if I first shape it into a ball and then let the dough relax for about five minutes before I begin to roll them out. Now the next step is to get rolling. I've got a little flour on the surface, and I'm just gonna roll these out into an oval about 10 by six inches. If you need to add a little more flour, you can do that to keep the dough from sticking to the rolling pin. Now for the fun part. I'm brushing these with butter and olive oil and ghee. Whatever your flavor preference is, that's the way to go. If you're looking for a non-dairy option, olive oil is perfect. And the ghee goes on a little thicker. I'm not going to melt the ghee first, because it's already pretty soft and I can brush it on just the way it is. That would be the more traditional way to serve it. Here I have some nigella seeds. They have a slightly smoky flavor and are a little bit tangy. Some people detect a little bitterness. I also have some black sesame seeds. And then for the last bit, fresh cilantro is a great complement to naan bread and it also goes really well with the dishes I'm serving today. The seeds are sticking nicely, but I'm just going to gently press the cilantro to help it stick. You could also roll it with a rolling pin. One thing I love about this recipe is it comes together so quickly. These only take about two minutes to cook on the first side, and then about a minute on the second side. You'll know when it's time to flip because you'll start seeing some bubbles forming on the top. And I see a few of them, but I'm just going to let it go for about another minute. Let's see how this looks. Oh, so satisfying. This is just what I wanted to see. Some nice browning spots. And now we'll give it another minute to be sure that the dough is cooked all the way inside. For an over-the-top way to serve your naan bread, knead two tablespoons of garlic into your dough and then roll it out and prepare it as directed. This delicious naan bread today is paired with some of my favorite Indian dishes, chana masala, 
and saucy Indian style chicken and vegetables. That's a taste of home recipe, of course. I like to eat it on its own, but it pairs well with so many dishes. Today I'm gonna tear it apart and then I'm gonna use it as my spoon.